Welcome to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the place to get a dose of empowerment to create the life you crave and deserve. I'm your host, Amy Beltran, CEO and founder of Irresistible University. Through my signature online coaching program, I teach women just like you how to ditch the body image issues, gain confidence, and lose the emotional weight to look and feel irresistible at any size. If you like this podcast, you're going to love my group coaching program. If you would like to learn more about the program, including the investment, what's included, get client testimonials, and to sign up and enroll, please head over to irresistibleicing.com slash course. The link is also in the show notes. All right, everybody, welcome back. If you are new here, hi, I'm glad you're here with us. Whether you are new or whether you are an OG, thank you for hanging out with me here on the Irresistible You podcast. So this week, we're going to be talking about the connection between depression and weight. And um, this all kind of started from a post that I had shared in my Instagram feed last week that was talking about kind of my lifelong struggles with depression and the the way that depression can show up in the most subtle ways. That it's not always this overwhelming blanket of sadness. And I want to talk a little bit about that and then share with you some of the things that I do in my own life to kind of, you know, keep myself ahead of that curve Um so that I don't find myself in a full-blown depressive episode. And I obviously feel that I have to say this, that if you are in a very dark place, if you are going through a major depressive episode or you have any type of feelings about harming yourself or anything like that, I please ask that you seek professional medical help. I am not a medical professional. I am just a girl here sharing my own experiences in the hopes that you know, maybe somehow this can help you and inspire you or motivate you in some way through your own journey. So, so I'm just going to share with you, I'm going to kind of go through the Instagram post that I had put up. And it was so funny because this really struck a nerve with so many of you that saw my, my post. And I even had people private message me and people reaching out. And it's like, it's sometimes those things that you post that you just, you don't really think they're going to hit. And this one did because I was literally, you guys, I was sitting at my kitchen table. Um, Both of the kids were, you know, Catalina was eating. Javi was in his little booster seat. And I just had this thing that hit me of like, I got to write this because it was just coming to me. And that, that in and of itself is so connected to where I've been lately because I have shared with you guys over the past few episodes, you know, in the last six months or so, since Javi was born and I'm adjusting to this new life and, you know, this having two kids and having my business and doing everything from home. And it's like, I haven't had much white space in my life. I haven't had a lot of margin in my life. And I told you guys how I, you know, realized that that's why it's been so hard for me with my weight loss this time around. And that, you know, I don't have much else to give at the end of the day because I don't have the extra margins built into my life. And this is just a temporary stop. This is not how it's going to be forever. This is really just a a season of life for me. And I'm sharing that because when I'm in this place, I can't be creative like I want to. Because to be creative, I need a lot of space. I need a lot of downtime. I need a lot of uninterrupted time. And with me right now being on kind of this part-time work schedule that I'm doing where I don't have all day like I used to have, it's been really difficult. And then even in the free time that I have, my brain is so just running on all cylinders, processing all the things that have to get done. I just haven't had any of that time to create new things. Yes, I create the podcast every week, but I'm talking about some of the stuff I do behind the scenes with just coming up with new ideas and new parts of the program and just all these kinds of things. Even my writing, I feel like I haven't, my writing over the past few months has just been, eh, which is a reason why on my Instagram, 
I've really just been using Instagram stories. Number one, I love Instagram stories. They're fast. They're quick. I just love them. But I haven't been posting as much on my feed where I would really share these like more blog posty type um, instead of just a caption. I mean, I really tr I tend to go deep. And this just hit me the other day and I was like, I have to write it. I have to get it out there and I have to share it. And it's been so long since that creativity spark has just bitten me. Anyway. So I did that, and actually one of my my good friends, Kem, who I used to host before before the before the uh, the the pandemic, um, we used to host a monthly meetup for local ladies that have their own businesses, and that hasn't happened since March of 2020. And so she messaged me and she's like, we should do a video on this. And I'm like, absolutely. So we're going to be talking even deeper on just women and depression and this new landscape that we're all living in and how to manage it. And just some, you know, some of our personal stories and things that we've done. And that's going to be happening on Wednesday, May 5th at 1130 AM. So I will be sharing that on my Facebook page, which is irresistible icing. And I'm also going to post it inside of the free group as well. So you want to make sure that you're following on all of those platforms so that you don't miss out on this, this live that we're going to be doing on Wednesday. So Okay, um, and the topic is really around depression and, again, how it shows up, how it shows up in the ways that we don't always think about. And so I'm going to just share with you my experience, how it shows up for me, and um, that's all I can do. I can only share from, from where I sit because, again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. I'm just someone sharing my journey with with mental health and, and all these things. So for me personally, depression is not seasonal. A lot of people suffer from like seasonal depression with the, you know, especially in the winter time. Um, and a lot of people have what we call situational depression where, you know, they have a layoff or they have um, a death or they have a car accident or just something in their life that happens and they have a situational depression that will ease over time when the situation changes, okay? For me, that's not the case, okay? Um, I don't have either one of those things. I have just generalized depression, I would say. And the, way, the best way I can describe it to you guys is that I know that it's always there. I know that it's always running in the background. It's kind of like on your computer and you have these programs that run. There's this program that's always running in the back of my mind that if I'm not careful and if I'm not managing myself and if I'm not, you know, taking care of myself and doing the things that are part of the Irresistible You framework and all of this stuff that I can go into a full-blown depressive episode. Okay, because I have been in those in the past and they're very dark, they're very scary, they're very debilitating. And I just want to say that when we talk about depression, we need this is why I want to talk about this because I'm sick and tired of mental health, depression, anxiety, and other disorders. I'm sick and tired of these things being swept under the rug. You don't talk about it. It's taboo. No, it's not. Because I would also argue that more people know what depression feels like than don't. And depression, when we hear that word, it doesn't always mean debilitating sadness either. It doesn't always mean a debilitating depressive episode. It's not, it doesn't always show up that way. It doesn't. Obviously it can, we just talked about that, but for me, depression, it's like it's always just there lurking in the shadows. It's behind, it's behind the wall. It's in the shadows. It's, you know, when I'm in the flow and I'm feeling happy and I feel like I've got everything going well for myself, it's a slow tap on the shoulder that's like, don't forget, I'm still here and I could come back at any time. And I'm always aware of its presence because I know if I am not aware and cautious and implementing the things that are for my personal mental health, I know that it could creep back at any time, at any time, okay? And I think of my depression as something I have to work on every single day. 
my, and I don't want to say happiness because happiness guys should never be your goal. Your goal in life. Yes. We want to feel happy. That's, you know, great, but we're not going to be, we're not, we are not built to be happy 24, seven, 365. And I think that's a lot of times where people's expectations get caught up. Like, well, I'm supposed to be happy all the time. And then these other things happen. Happiness is not the goal. Okay. For me, the goal is peace, peace in my life, peace in myself and my body um, and my relationships and my work peace and peace is not always happy, go lucky rainbows and butterflies. You know, peace can also be knowing that something happened. It's like, okay, like I'm not going to allow that to steal my peace away from me. So I have to work at this every single day. I have to work on my peace every single day because at the end of the day, it's still a choice. It's a choice. And I want to also, I feel like I have to say some of these things like the fine print that depression in some circumstances is not a choice. It's not a choice because it has to do with the chemical makeup of your brain and you need medication and you need medical help. I also take medication. I am very, I am very upfront about that with everyone. I have nothing to hide because again, we're taking the stigma away from this stuff. I take Wellbutrin every single day and I've been taking Wellbutrin for a long time and I don't think there is anything wrong with taking medication. If it's going to help you, if it's going to give you a better quality of life, go for it. Okay. For me personally, I can't just rely on that. There's, and, and I think that goes for anyone. There's also things that I have to do in addition to that to take care of myself and to stay ahead of the depression. And so Every day it's a choice. Am I going to let this day go to shit and I'm going to cave into it? Or am I going to take the steps necessary to take control of my life? Because I know what it feels like to be in that dark, dark place. Okay. I know what it feels like to be on Google and searching for ways to end your life. And if that is where you're at, please turn this off and please reach out and go get help because that's, that's like the first piece of it. And I feel like I have to keep saying this and I'm, and this is probably the last time I'm going to say it. And we're going to move on. Um, because that's not what the goal of this episode is. The goal of this episode is not to dive deep into like major depressive disorder and suicide and those things. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about the subtleness of it and how the subtleness can snowball into the bigger stuff if we're not careful. Okay. So, you know, I have really good days. I have really good days or weeks or months where depression is not tapping me on the shoulder, but I'm not naive to the presence of it in the background. And the reason I can go days, weeks, or months and have good days where I'm not falling into the depressiveness is because of the things that I do that I'm going to share later in the episode. It's because of the self-awareness. You know, when I was not self-aware and I was zombie walking it through life and just, you know, tuned out to myself, my feelings, my body, my emotions... Yeah, then it feels like it shows up and you're like, well, how did this happen in terms of the depression? Just like with the weight and the weight and the depression are very much interlinked together. And so it can be this suddenly or this gradual, then suddenly like burn where it happens. If you're not aware of it. So for me, the way depression shows up, it's like a slow burn. It's like a slow burn. It's like, well, you know, I really showered yesterday. So I'm going to just go ahead and skip today because I'm really busy this morning. Or I washed my hair yesterday. I can just throw it up in a messy bun today and not worry about it. Now, I'm going to say when you have these thoughts or when I have these thoughts, it doesn't always mean it's depression. 
but it's how it slowly builds over time of like, well, I'm going to just let it go. I'm going to like let myself go today and not shower because I'm really busy and I'm just going to be working from home all day. I'm not going anywhere. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. And if you have had depression, you know, not showering for days means you're depressed. That's that, that is a clear sign of depression. And so that one, well, because here's the, here's how it goes for me. It's a chain reaction. So if I don't shower and I just kind of do the roll out of bed thing, go into my office and just, you know, sit at the computer and work, 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 work. And then after I'm done working, I'm straight into mom mode for the rest of the, the afternoon and evening. I start feeling gross. I start to feel gross if I don't shower every morning, okay? And that starts to turn into, ugh, I just don't want to do this, and I just don't want to make my salad, and I just don't want to do that. And it creates a domino effect. Just like getting up every morning and making yourself get in the shower creates a domino effect as well in the positive, okay? So then it also shows up in other subtle ways, like, oh, you know... It's really too bright outside. I don't want to open the blinds. I have noticed the connection for me. Now, there are some rooms in the house that I don't really open the blinds because I don't feel the need to. But like like my bedroom, for example, I, I rarely have the blinds open in my bedroom. And it's for privacy reasons. Um, but the back of my house, I ha- in, you know, in our new house now, we have a beautiful view. Our backyard is, it was one of the main reasons we bought this home. It's stunning. We have a pool and it's, it's just very well, it's just beautiful. And if I love to go downstairs in the morning and open the blinds in the kitchen and just like sit in the gratitude of where we are and like, wow, we did this, right? And I have noticed a connection to like, well, I mean, it's really bright outside and I got to sit at the computer at the table and, you know, so again, Days that I may decide, you know what, can we just close the blinds because i got to do some computer work? That's not necessarily the subtleness of depression. It just is what it is. But there's a pattern that I have been very accustomed to like seeing in myself where I'm just like, ugh, I don't want to look outside. And so there was a day last week where the depression was knocking hard on my shoulder. And it was a very hot day. And I just didn't want to be outdoors. And staying indoors for me is another subtle indication of like, all right, girl, like we need to pay attention to this. Wanting to just stay inside, not wanting to feel the heat, not wanting to feel the brightness of the sun. For me, those are like really big red flags. And so I just had all the blinds shut. I never went outside that day. And that was the day I was starting to feel really bad, really bad. So there is a connection. And so for you... This may not be the case. So the point of me sharing my piece of this is that maybe it rings true for you and maybe it doesn't. But maybe there's other subtle ways depression is tapping you on the shoulder. And so that's how it shows up for me. It's like, don't open the blinds. You don't need those on. You don't need those open. It's too bright. Then it's going to be hot. And then you can't see. And da 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 And it's like, why would I not want to look out into the pool and see the rocks and see my Buddha out in the garden and like my beautiful flowers? That's my happy place. That's my safe place. So, but depression sometimes, if we try to rationalize it, you're going to drive yourself crazy because you can't always rationalize this. Okay. Um, And it's also... This is, this is how it snowballs for me. Like, well, I mean, we don't really need to go anywhere today. We don't need to go anywhere today. I can just do all that tomorrow or I can just order online. And again, the flip side of that is some days I don't want to go anywhere, but I feel good about it. I feel good about it. It's when you don't feel good about it or you feel like you're bargaining with yourself about it. So one of the things for me that really helps is I have to get out of the house every single day. Even if I get out of that. So for those of you that don't know or you're new here, I work from home. 
I run my business from home and I have been working from home since before it was cool. <laughs> I have been working from home since right around 2008, 2009, 2008, 2009, I would work from home like once a week. And it was like this really like, whoa, they let you work from, it was like a big deal back then. And then 2010, I have worked from home since 2010, and I have never gone back to work in an office, and I could not be happier doing this. I would never, I don't care what the money is, I would never go back to working in an office again or working for anybody else. <laughs> um, that's a whole other thing. So anyway, I love it. But one of the things I know for me that rings true I have to leave the house every single day. And that could just be getting in the car and going to get like a lemonade somewhere. Um, getting in the car and just walking around Target or Walmart or um, doing a pickup somewhere. Even if I don't get out of the car, there is something about pulling out of the driveway, going somewhere, Plus, I really enjoy driving. I like to get in the car, listen to my music, listen to my podcast. Javi can take a nap. Kat can play on her tablet. And it's just like sometimes we take Chewy with us. And it's just everything is good. Life is good. Okay. So my mind will start convincing me, you don't need to go there today. Who do you? Oh, come on. We don't need to go spend money there. We can just stay home. And because, like, let's go back to everything I've been saying. Let's see, I didn't take a shower today. I just rolled out of bed and put whatever comfy clothes on. I didn't put the makeup on. Um, so now I physically don't want to go anywhere because I don't look presentable to go anywhere. So it just snowballs on top of each other. It's like, well, yeah, you didn't even put your makeup on. Like, you need to wash that hair. Like, like, why would you go anywhere today? Let's just call it a day, okay? So, again, it's like that bargaining with yourself is how I know when it's unhealthy versus healthy. Because, again, there are days where it's like, it's raining today. It's very gloomy outside today. This is just, let's stay in our comfy clothes, our pajamas, and, like, let's just watch TV and movies all day. And some days that's what you want to do. And that's okay. Right. It shows up in these little subtle ways. And another way it shows up for me is procrastination. <laughs> I have been a chronic procrastinator for most of my life. I mean, I have memories of like staying home sick from school so I could finish a project in one day. I wrote a, you guys are going to die. I wrote like a 20 or 25 page research paper that was supposed to take the entire semester. I wrote it in like a day in college. <laughs> um, I, I know that one of my toxic traits is procrastination. And my husband always jokes. He's like, procrastinators will meet tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, but that might not work either. So <laughs> I, I am very bad with procrastination and I do not like that about myself. It's something that I know I need to get better at. And when, when I know that depression is like knocking in the background, it's the little procrastination things that I feel like contribute. So for example, um, let, let me just see here. Okay. Filling out a form that needs to be sent in and it takes like two minutes on the phone. Okay. I had to take a picture of Kat's health forms for school because she's starting preschool. Like, oh my God, I can't wait. Um, and I'm nervous and excited. And that's a whole, I'll be sharing that on Instagram, you guys. So I had to fill out, not fill out, but I had to like scan the document and get it to school. And that felt grueling to me last week. And not only that, so I don't even know if this is full, like a depression thing, but doing admin tasks are grueling to me. I hate it. I don't enjoy it. I feel like it's a waste of time. I don't want to have to do it. But it's like those necessary things. So I will procrastinate things like that. Um, you know, taking things back to the store to get a refund, it feels like that just the thing will sit on my counter and sit on my counter until I'm like, oh shit, I only have two days left and I can't get my money back. And now I got to get it to the store where my husband is like, when something needs to get done, it gets done. 
It just gets done. And I wish I could be more like that. So it shows up for me in ways like that of like procrastinating to do certain things. The connection here again with weight and food and depression, it's all interconnected to each other. But it's also like telling yourself, okay, well, you know, back to this example of like, didn't shower, rolled out of bed, no makeup, looking a hot mess, and as a result, not feeling too good about myself today, not getting things accomplished because I'm not feeling like myself. And so why would I want to eat a salad or something healthy for dinner. I'll just order something. And of course it's like, well, we have to order the worst thing on the menu because we're going to go hard and start over tomorrow. It's like, it shows up in these ways. Like it's okay to binge eat tonight. You had a hard day. It's okay. You'll start over tomorrow. (sighs) Another way is skipping being out, like I said, being outdoors and not wanting to be outside and feel the heat. Because what's interesting is a lot of my major depressive episodes, and there must be some kind of connection here, is that they happen in the summertime. They they happen in the summertime. So there must be a connection to that. So it's like, well, um... I don't want to go outside for a walk today because it's hot and I don't want to sweat and I don't want to have chub rub and I don't want to da 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 da. Like, you know what I'm saying. It's like you just keep convincing yourself. It's so again, it's like that bargaining and the convincing yourself that your decision to stay home is the best decision. It goes even into drinking my water. I will tell myself, like, I don't want to drink water, even though my body feels like shit because let's say I had a binge the night before, I feel swollen, I feel gross, and I'm like, well, but if I drink all that water, I'm going to have to pee every, like, 20 minutes, and then I have to get up. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it's it's these subtle, subtle but not, once you know them, they're not so subtle because you can call it out and you can recognize it. But it definitely, definitely shows up for me in these little subtle ways. You know, it's, it's the time where, you know, the baby is taking a nap and I lay down to give him his bottle and get him to sleep. And it's like, well, I don't want to disturb him. I might as well just lay here and check social media instead of going back in the office and finishing that deadline. Hello, procrastinator that you had to get done today. It shows up in all these ways. So for you, I want you to think about what are the subtle ways that depression starts tapping you on the shoulder. And so it's not like if I don't take a shower or if I stay home for two days in a row that I'm going to be in a depressive episode. But what happens is all of these things that I'm saying, they compound over time and it snowballs and it gets bigger and it gets bigger and it gets bigger to next thing you know, it can be a full-blown depressive episode. Because I didn't always know my triggers. I didn't always know these little things that I'm sharing with you because I had no self-awareness. I was like a zombie. I was in a, I was in zombie mode walking around in complete denial of reality and my true emotions. Okay? And these things you know, I think the misconception out there is like, well if you take medication and you say some bullshit affirmations in the mirror, you should never feel depressed again. And that is so not true. When you have Um, generalized depression in this way where it's not just seasonal or situational, but it's just kind of always there in the background. There's other things that you have to do to take control. And I'm going to share some of, I mean, I've kind of done that a little bit as I went through that other list, but I'm going to share with you some specific things that I know that I have to do every day. Because again, like I said, it's an everyday decision. And I don't like to use the word fight because I think that has such a negative connotation. I need to come up with a different word. But it's like every single day. And let me just use the word. Maybe we can come up with something different. If you think of something different, post it in the Facebook group. Let me know. I have to fight for my peace, which that sounds like an oxymoron. Like I have to 
choose my peace. That makes sense, right? Um, because otherwise I could just be a victim and fall into all of that pity party stuff when things aren't going right. And I want to choose peace over everything else. And every single day, that is like a fight. It's like, I have to fight for it. Maybe it's like myself, I don't want to take a shower. Ugh, I took one last night. You don't need to take one today. It's like, no, bitch, get in the shower. We're going to do this. Because we need to create that domino effect. Sometimes that's what it's about. It's like, I've told people before that like, if you're feeling this way, just go get in the shower. Just get in the shower with no other expectations. And it can be just a wash shower. We don't have to do exfoliating. We don't have to do shaving. We're just getting in the shower and getting clean. And then see what happens when you get out. And it's like, well, I'm already out. Might as well put some a little bit of makeup on. Maybe just some like, you know, tent and moisturizer. And I'll do that. And then I'm like, ooh, girl, you, you need that bronzer and that blush and that highlight. And it just, it will snowball for me into like putting myself together. Not always, but most of the time. And, you know, again, so I was saying, it's like, it's not like depression when you have generalized depression like this, like it just goes away. It doesn't. It doesn't go away and like never come back again. But you have, you have to have other tools. You have to have other coping mechanisms to be able to deal with this. And it's just like with weight, right? Just because you lose your weight doesn't mean you're free from the thoughts and feelings that came along with being overweight. Because those things are always there in the background too. And it's like we have to learn how to manage our emotions. And I say it all the time, but I want to say it again. One of the single most powerful things that you can learn if you're going to invest anything in your life is to learn how to manage your feelings and your emotions. And we are not taught how to do that. We are taught to stop crying. What's wrong with you? Or, or a kid falls down and gets hurt and we shush them. Like, shh, shh, shh. like we do the little shusher thing and it's like, let the kid cry. Feel what you need to feel. Tell them they can be frustrated. And even, you know, a friend or someone is crying in our presence, like, oh, don't cry. No, cry. Learn how to manage your emotions and learn that sadness, anger, frustration, jealousy, all of these things, they are normal. And if you didn't feel those things, then I would be concerned. Okay. And so for me, it's like even after years of therapy, going through EMDR, learning new coping skills, developing and implementing the irresistible you guiding principles and my framework through the gratitude list, the happy moments, the joy, the great things in my life. It is still there lurking in the shadows. But the difference for me is I am not inviting that depression to come hang out with me. I'm going to do everything in my power to push it out so that it doesn't come in and take over everything going on. And so I have had to learn over the years, well, what does that look like? And it's so interconnected to how I show up in my eating and my weight is how I manage my depression as well. Because when you're depressed, the last thing you're going to give a shit about is what you're eating and how you're taking care of yourself. So of course they're connected. So let me just share some, these again are like little subtle things that you maybe don't think about Um, because standing in front of the mirror, telling yourself, I am amazing. I am great. I'm going to have a beautiful day. Like, okay, cool. That's nice if you do that for yourself, but that's also like some surface level bullshit stuff. And that can't be the only thing that you're doing as a way to cope because that just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So It's the little subtle things that I know for me over time, this is what works for me. This is what works. So it's like, and and I'm saying this is what works to prevent that slow burn of like 
not going to shower. I'm going to procrastinate. I'm not going to go anywhere today. I'm not going to call anybody. I'm going to just kind of like hang under the radar. Next thing you know, you're feeling really bad about yourself. Okay. So for me, it's like as simple as before I go to bed at night, my kitchen and my living room area, they have to be clean. Because when I wake up in the morning and the sink is full of dishes and there's shit all over the bar and the counters and the couches, I want to rip someone's hair out. It makes me angry. It makes me upset. Because when your environment, it looks chaotic, your brain feels chaotic. So for me, it's taking the time at night to put all the dishes in the washer, run the washer, wipe down the counters, take everything off the bar, get all the toys up, like to just clean up the two main living areas downstairs that we all hang out at the most. So that when I wake up, so this is one of those things where it's like you are, you are investing in your future. You know how I always tell you guys, like you need to start making deposits in the bank for your future because what you do today is the type of person you're going to be tomorrow and a year from now. So if I want to be a person tomorrow that feels calm, that feels at peace when I come downstairs in the morning by myself to make my water and to like open the windows, I need my environment to match. I need my environment to look peaceful as well. So it's like taking that time at night to do that. And that makes me feel really good. Okay, so again, that is investing in my future, even if that future is, you know, 10 hours from now, it doesn't matter. This is what we're doing. So that way, when I come downstairs in the morning, guess what? I'm walking into a peaceful, calm house. And the first thing I want to do is open all the blinds. I want to open the blinds and I want to soak in the view. I want to soak in the gratitude of where we are for our yard, for how hard we have worked, for all the things that we are doing in our life, for just the beauty of nature. Like, honestly, I mean, it's, and and it sounds corny and the old me so many years ago would laugh at this kind of stuff, but obviously I needed it, right? Because here I was walking around in denial and it's like, oh, those, those corny people and their gratitude and their walks and their nature. It's like, well, yeah, well, they're onto something. And I can tell you from being on both sides of the fence, it's absolutely true. So then when I do that, guess what? I open the blinds. um, I make my water with my little pink lemonade and my crystal light stuff. And I go outside and I just like sit on the patio. I just sit on the patio, usually Chewy's with me running around the yard. He, I swear to you, he even meditates outside. It's the cutest thing. So that is what we do. That is what I do. Okay, and that right there, it's certain little behaviors that we do that set the intention for the rest of the day. Now, it doesn't mean because I come down to a clean house, go outside, you know, meditate, do the gratitude stuff that the rest of the day couldn't be bad. Like there could still be bad stuff that happens, but I am setting the intention of how I want to feel for the rest of the day instead of letting the day dictate it. Meaning you come downstairs, everything's a mess. So now you're angry at your, your husband or your wife, like this asshole, they didn't clean up and they stayed up later than me. And uh, the kids left their shit everywhere. And I hate everyone. And girl, you are starting your day really bad because you're already starting your day off resentful, angry, bitter, pissed, all the things. And when you start your day off that way, it's, it's like a snowball. So you can snowball it either way you want to go. And taking that 10, 15 minutes the night before, boom, it sets the stage, okay? And so then it's like, all right, you know, what are we going to do now? So that's just one of those little tiny things that makes me just feel really good. And, you know, I believe with depression, having structure, having goals, having schedules, is very key to staying on top of it. Very key. If you just have an open-ended day, I mean, look at the world right now 
and how much depression has come forward since all these kids are home, since all these people have been laid off and they have no schedule, no structure. It is very much interconnected, okay? So for me, it's also the self... I don't want to call this self-care because this should, I don't believe showering is self-care. I believe showering is a necessity. I believe showering is as much of self-care as it is to eat breakfast. It's just something you need to do. (laughs) It, It should not be, we should not be living in a society where, oh, congratulations, you showered, you're practicing self-care. It's like, no, you should just be entitled to shower every day. (laughs) But anyway, getting in the shower every morning. Okay, and just having that water hit your skin, putting on that good smelling, you know, shower gel or that sugar scrub, just something that feels like, oh, you know, this is for me. So we can turn an everyday shower into a little bit of some self care with, with the exfoliating, with the shower gel, whatever, whatever. Just get your ass in the shower. Okay, and that is something for me that's a must. It's, it's just a must. Um, it's just a must. I have to do it. I have to do it because I know it's those little subtle ways where it's going to show up for me. Okay. So it's also, you know, putting my makeup on. I don't care if I'm going to be home all day. I don't care if I'm only going to see my kids all day. I am going to put makeup on, not because I'm embarrassed to be without makeup, But for me, makeup is a very empowering tool. It makes me feel really good about myself. It makes me feel very much pulled together. And I have no desire to not wear makeup. Like it's just, it's just a thing for me. So it may not be a thing for you and that's cool. But for me it is. So it's like putting my makeup on makes me feel like Amy makes me feel pulled together. It makes me feel beautiful. It makes me feel like myself. And when I put my makeup on, guess what happens? It's like a snowball. It's like, all right, cool. We need to go run to the store. Boom, let's go. There's no like, okay, well, I didn't get dressed. I didn't do my face yet. Now I got to do that. And then I start thinking about all the things I need to do to leave the house. And I don't want to go. I don't want to go. So, so it's also um, putting my, my perfume, I love, me, I love my perfume, putting that on, putting my makeup on, and then putting my jewelry on. I am a jewelry person. I always have, for the most part, I'm always wearing my, my wedding rings. I have a right-hand ring that is an opal for my um, children's birthday for October. I have my necklaces. I have my, um, my smartwatch with my cute, like blinged out, um, band. I have like my everyday jewelry that I will wear. And that makes me feel really good too. It makes me feel pretty. It makes me feel like, you know, I just love girliness. I love femi- I love to be feminine. I love just, I just, that's just my style. And if that's not your style, that's cool. It doesn't have to be my style, but the point is to do what works for you. This is what works for me. Okay. So putting my jewelry on and then getting dressed. And I don't mean getting dressed in stretchy pants. I don't mean getting dressed in workout pants. I mean getting dressed. And I know I have shared this on other episodes and I have no idea what the number is, what episode number. But I talk about how, you know, some of the times where I was zombie walking and I woke up one day and said, oh my God, I can't believe I've gained this weight. None of my clothes fit. These were times in my life where I would never put jeans on because I was in denial. I knew I was overeating. I knew I was way overeating and I was so scared to put the jeans on because I knew they weren't going to fit. And what if I would have put them on when they were tight enough to where they just didn't button? Then I could be like, oh shoot, like, okay, we need to do something here. But by the time I put the jeans on, they didn't go over my knees or even barely, I mean, there's no way they were reaching my hips, okay? So I firmly believe you need to wear your jeans or real clothes even when you're working at home. Okay, on the flip side, are there days that you're just going to wear workout pants or, you know, your leggings? Of course. The difference is if you're doing seven days a week in stretchy clothes, uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. 
You need to get in the real clothes. And I can't tell you how many people I have heard from this year that had their first experience working from home in 2020 and they had that same thing happen to them. And it's not like because you work at home that you automatically gained weight. It's because you're not tuning in and being self-aware of how your body feels. When you are in oversized, stretchy clothes, you have no idea what your body feels like. You have nothing to gauge it, especially when you're zoned out and you're going to just zombie eat and zombie walk. So get dressed. I have found for me that is one of the most important things I can do is to put my jeans on, put my real clothes on. And it also affects my work. So because I work from home, the act of being dressed, you know, put together, makeup on, jewelry on, perfume on, jeans on, coming into the office, I walk in here like a boss. I walk in here like the CEO that I am. When you don't do those things, it affects your self-esteem. It's like, well, I'll just, you know, stroll on in here and sit at the desk and hunch over. And it's like your voice changes, your posture changes. You just don't have as much like confidence. And if I were to talk to you guys like this, you would never listen to my podcast. So it's like, what did I see that quote? Hang on. Hang on. I got to remember this. You know that um, that quote that's like, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. Okay. I saw this quote and I was like, how come I had never heard this before? It was like, it's this, dress how you want to be addressed. Dress how you want to be addressed. Because when you don't take pride in yourself and you roll out of bed and you look a hot disheveled mess and you're wearing, you know, old pilly, holy clothes and da, da, da. like people are not going to take you seriously. And not even that you cannot take yourself seriously when you're putting yourself together that way. So this again is like one of those things where it's like, this is going to make all the difference in the world. Okay. Um, so, so that's what we have to do. We, we have to get girl, take pride in yourself. I don't care what you weigh, what you weigh is irrelevant. Cause I can already hear your brain going, yeah, but I just have so much weight to lose. Nothing fits. Okay. Then go buy the bigger size, go out and get the size that fits you so that you can feel empowered. You can feel beautiful. Even if you know you're going to be losing weight, who cares? You need to feel beautiful and gorgeous and irresistible on the way down the scale. The scale going down is not permission or a prerequisite for you to feel beautiful. You have to learn that shit now with the with the with the rolls with the hanging gut with the cellulite with the extra fat you have to learn now how to appreciate and take pride in yourself because you cannot continue to teach yourself that you only deserve that when you weigh da 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 okay so get dressed get dressed and all of these things that i'm sharing are ways that i keep depression from coming into my life, but it's also how I manage my feelings and my emotions that lead into the weight gain and the weight loss. This is part of it. And a lot of these things that I'm sharing are actually part of the things in the irresistible you guiding principles that actually really help. Um, you need a to-do list. You need a to-do list and all you perfectionists, all you all or nothing people, listen up. You better not be sitting there with a to-do list It looks like a scroll. It's like, it looks like a coupon from CVS that's like fallen to the floor when you roll it out. Okay. This is not the goal here. Your to-do list, the reason you need a to-do list is number one, you need to manage your, you need to manage your mind. You need to manage your mind from, you know, mindlessly scrolling on Facebook. It was like this morning I had to get this recorded and I was like, could not stop watching these stupid videos. I'm like, This is not helping anything in your life right now. Get off of there. You need a to-do list. 
so that you can feel like you have accomplished something every single day because the sense of accomplishment will make you feel so good. So on that to-do list, you should have one to three things that if you don't finish anything else today, if you could just tackle these one to three things, you're going to feel like you've made it through the day. And that's going to help you manage your mind. It's going to help you feel accomplished. It's going to give you that boost of confidence and that self-esteem that you're like, yes, I did the thing. I did this. Okay. I had a day um, a few weeks ago where I just, I had things for work and projects that I wanted to accomplish and they weren't getting done. And so I needed to feel accomplishment. And so once my husband left for work and I had the kids full time, I was like, we are going to go through some stuff, some clothes, some baby stuff, and we're getting rid of things and we're taking them to the, to the goodwill because I needed to feel like I was achieving something and achieving something could be, I need to organize this drawer today, but not your whole house. Okay. That's the difference. Not your whole house, not your whole closet, not your whole room. I need to organize the utensil drawer. That's it, okay? So have a to-do list and prioritize the shit out of that thing, okay? And that is going to help you manage your mind. It's going to help you feel really good about yourself, okay? And it's also going to give you structure through the day because that's what we need. Um, This may not ring true for everybody, but for me, it's like I need to go somewhere every single day. I already talked about this. So when I'm already dressed, I got my uniform, my, you know, my... My, I call it my uniform, like my jeans and my cute kimono or whatever I'm wearing. I got my uniform on. I got my makeup done, my hair done, jewelry's on. Well, as soon as I'm done working and husband goes to work and I'm here with the kids and the dog, I'm like, let's go somewhere, guys. Let's go do something fun. If I wasn't already dressed and ready, it's like, eh, I'll just stay home. And something about being home for hours and upon hours upon hours, I think especially with kids at home, I can't do it. Like I, and and this is the kind of stuff you have to come to terms with. You have, and I tell my girls in the program this, you have to date yourself in the sense of like, you have to get to know yourself, to know what annoys you, to know what you want, to know what you don't want. And one of the things for me that I have discovered the way that I, I love my children, like they are my entire heart, you guys. I love my children, but I've had to discover the way I love to mother, the, the way that I like to spend time with them. I love to go places and have experiences. And that could just be going to the outdoor outlet mall and walking around and getting like a lemonade and going to a couple stores and just running, you know, that to me is one way. Going to the zoo, the aquarium, like just walking around the mall, something. I enjoy being on the go and doing things and having experiences with my kids versus being home all day having to entertain them, uh, it's exhausting to me. And it's okay to know that. It's okay to admit that. I cannot play make-believe and pretend and Barbie, but for so long. It To me, it feels draining. It feels exhausting. Um, obviously, I do these things, but I cannot do it from 1 o'clock to 8 o'clock at night. I just can't do that. It's too much. So... Get to know yourself and how you enjoy doing things. I love to take my daughter somewhere and like, you know, we experience things together and seeing her face light up and seeing her excited and just learning. And I love it. I love it. So I like to plan to go somewhere just about every single day. And there was a weekend a few weeks ago, I was putting my makeup on in the bathroom in our room and we didn't really have plans that Saturday to do much. And I said, I was like doing my makeup and everything. And I, my husband was in the bedroom and I called out to him and I was like, Hey, I was like, depression's knocking on my shoulder and it's getting really loud. And he knows what that means. He knows that that means, um, I can't stay home all day. We have to go do something. We have to, we have to go outdoors. We have to go walk somewhere because I can't, even on a weekend, it like, it's just, 
I can be still and I can be with myself and I can be home, but there are certain days that I just need to get out. And I think for me, that's even heavier because I work here. (laughs) My business is here. I work here. My kids are here. And then the past year, look how much we were all home right? Look how much we were all home. So again, this stuff may not ring true for you because you might be a total homebody. I am not. (laughs) And I never, ever have been a homebody type of person. Okay. So that's something that works for me. Another thing for me is being outdoors. It is like, it's like my type. It's like my version of, um, it's like church to me. It's like, um, it's just spiritual to me to like be outdoors and with nature and just, it just feels so good. You guys, like I used to talk about how I was not a nature person that I would never be that type of person. Like those are those granola, crunchy, like cargo short wearing people, no offense if that's you, but like, that was not me. Okay. (laughs) Um, you know, those are those girls that don't wear makeup. And I was like, I'm just, I'm just a girly girl. I am not a nature girl or whatever. And that is not true. So as I was going through um, my last major depressive um, episode is when the Irresistible You framework was born. It was born out of that dark time, okay? And as I was going through that, through recovery and, you know, really learning about my binge eating disorder and going through therapy and learning, like relearning, not even relearning, learning how to do certain things for the first time. One of the things I discovered was my love of being outdoors that, you know, going somewhere as far as like discovering this new trail, discovering this new beach, like, oh my gosh, you guys. So I have lived in Virginia Beach my entire life. I am from this area. I was born in this area. And so I feel like at 39 years old, I know literally everything there is to do here. (laughs) Um, Every like secret spot, every beach, every trail, I feel like I know all of them. And so it was so cool to me last night that we actually discovered a new beach, which is like shocking, mind blowing. But that kind of stuff lights me up up like finding this little cool trail out in nature or this new place by the water or like going out in my kayak and just just being just just being there that is so therapeutic and spiritual and just like I was realizing that's why I've been feeling depression knocking on my door because I haven't had that stuff in my schedule lately you know yes we've been going for walks around the neighborhood it's not the same it's not the same Um, I have not been doing that, that curious exploration type stuff, adventure stuff that I like to do. Okay. Um, and my version of adventure probably makes some people laugh, but like, I'm never getting on a zip line, not doing it. That to me is not adventure. That is complete anxiety. (laughs) But anyway, you got to figure out for you, like, what do you love to do? What is going to bring you joy? What is going to light you up? What can you look forward to? Because you have to have things in your life to look forward to other than other than food. Okay? Because when you only have food to look forward to, you're going to stay stuck in this trap, in this cycle. And I think that's another thing too where it's like the past year... I had nothing to like, well, I mean, I I take that back. I did have things to look forward to because hello, we had a baby (laughs) Um, and we bought our house and it was like, yes, all of this was happening in a pandemic. So it was very strange and very weird. But that thing of like having a vacation to look forward to that fun, that fun time, that girls night out, that date night out or whatever, that has also been missing. So I think it's worth noting here that if you're struggling You need to realize we are not in normal times. It is slowly coming back, okay? But the past year and a half or so has not been normal by any means. And I don't think people are giving themselves credit for that because we've been in this for so long that we just think, well, this is just how it is now. This is how we live now from like Walking Dead. No, this is not normal times. 
So again, it's like, how long has it been since you had fun? How long has it been since you went on that vacation that recharged your batteries? How long has it been since you had a girl's night out or girl's night in or date night or whatever? I have not had some of these things in a very long time. And I know that these things are part of me feeling good. These things are part of me keeping depression away from my shoulder. So you have to get to know yourself. So I would say to wrap this up, the big lesson here is you have to become so deeply self-aware to be able to be honest with yourself about what you need, what you don't need, what lights you up, what doesn't light you up, what you enjoy, what you don't enjoy, and then you just lean into that. You lean into that. And when you stop fighting who you are and you accept and acknowledge that this is actually who I am, like if I were to sit here and pretend like, oh my God, yes, I love to play Barbies for like hours at a time. No, I don't. And me saying that does not remotely take away an ounce of what I feel for my daughter at all. But that's not how I enjoy spending time together. Does she enjoy spending time like that together? Yes. And so do I do it? Yes. But if I had to do it day in and day out for hours at a time, I would lose my shit. You know, I saw this lady um, on YouTube who recently had a baby around the same time as I did um, last year. And she was posting things that were so concerning. That, I mean, a lot of people were like, you need to reach out. You know, I'm really concerned about you. Some of the stuff she was saying just completely, uh, the way she was coming across with her new baby, completely miserable, completely unhappy, completely miserable. And I mean, we need to be tuned into that stuff too, guys, because postpartum depression is a real thing and it can escalate very quickly. But then she admitted that she hadn't left the house in months. I don't even know. The baby was two or three months old and she had never left the house. And I'm thinking, and I mean, she hadn't even left the house to go for a walk outdoors. And I'm thinking, well, no shit. Like, no wonder you feel the way you feel. You cannot lock yourself in the house day in and day out and expect to feel good, baby or no baby especially as a new mom. And I would say too, like for me, like those have been saving graces with both my pregnancies is like knowing that about myself ahead of time. I knew that about myself ahead of time, that I wanted to be active. I wanted to be walking. I wanted to be getting out. I did not want to be sitting at home and going, well, I had a baby. So now my life is just, my life sucks. It's like, no, you know, and I see so many moms that don't think, that think their life has, yes, your life changes. Let's be very clear, right? But it like, for me, it's changing for the better. And my kids are part, they are now incorporated into our lifestyle. We're not going to sit here. Obviously, my husband and I aren't going clubbing every night like back in the day. Obviously, okay? And we weren't even doing that before we got pregnant. Uh, We had totally slowed down all that stuff. But my point is like, We had our kids and they're going to fit our lifestyle. We're not going to sit here and be like, well, we can't do this and we can't do that and we don't do this and we don't. It's like, no. You know what? We like to go kayaking. Kids are learning how to kayak. Javi's got a little while. But um, you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is you cannot take every part of you and destroy it because you're a parent. You know, and so it's like my kids, they... We love to go places. They love to go places. We go find places to walk and explore and and do all the things. And like, they love that. They love that. And that's what you have to do is you have to learn who you are and you have to fiercely protect it. That's the other piece of it. You have to fiercely protect who you are. And what I mean by that is like, if you know that you cannot be around people for however many hours a day because you're going to lose your shit, then you fiercely protect that time. You know, um, 
I am very much an introvert, but I can play an extrovert, so to speak. Like, I have no problem speaking in front of people. That was not always the case. I can get on a stage. I can talk in front of people. I can get in front of a classroom. I can do this podcast. I can do all the things. But after so long, I'm done. I need to go recharge. So if someone were to ask me to do something, my answer might be no, because I need to protect my time. You know, so fiercely protect what you need. If I know I need that that kitchen cleaned every night, then guess what? It's going to get done. It's going to get done. Um, get to know yourself. Get to date yourself. Because the more you do that, it's, it's going to help in your, um, you know, if you're someone like me that kind of suffers with ongoing depression, it's going to help with that. And in turn, it's going to help with your weight loss as well. It's going to help in your weight loss journey the more you know yourself. So, This is my cue to finish because I feel exhausted because I've been talking for over an hour and this is my cue to wrap this up. Let's continue the discussion over in the free Facebook group, guys. If you're not a member, what are you waiting for? Go and join. It is absolutely free. You just look up Irresistible You Podcast under the Facebook groups search. The link is also in the show notes. And that is your place to communicate. You can go post in there. You do not have to wait for me to post something, although I am pretty active in the group as well. That is the place to hang out as the after show to the podcast, okay? I randomly will go live in there, and I mentioned at the beginning, we are doing a live on Wednesday to talk more about depression. Um, Kim Porter is such an amazing woman. She has so much to share on this. She has an incredible story, and her and I are going to just, we keep it raw and we keep it real. So if you like me, you're going to like us both together. Um, we're going to do that, and then... Um, you know, that's our place to hang out. It's private. It's secret. No one can see it on your Facebook page. So no nosy people up in there. So there's that. And then there's also my Instagram, which is at Irresistible Icing. That is the most, probably the best way to stay connected. It's where I share the most behind the scenes with stories and such. And yeah, that's it. If this is helpful, if you love my podcast, could you please go to Apple and leave a rating and review? That means the world to me. It is the number one way you can support this podcast to keep it going. And I will talk to you guys soon. I hope you are doing amazing. Until next time, stay irresistible. Bye, guys.